All right, my uh, voltage is dropping pretty rapidly, so I gotta be quick about this. I hope it's got enough charge to power the Midnight Classic charge controller. I would not be surprised if it did not though, which would kind of suck for me. Okay, so make sure I've got my polarity right here. I do indeed. I was hoping that would just boot the uh, Midnight Classic right up, but that does not appear to be the case. All right, let's try giving it some juice. See if it'll charge. Drawing five watts. Come on. I don't even know if I've got enough power in the battery to sustain the Midnight Classic while it pulls this bull crap. Five seconds left. There we go, we're putting power in. Okay, good. I'm going to set the uh, Victron fully charged voltage to 13.6 volts. That way it'll uh, list the, the battery as fully charged when it is fully charged, because um, I'm not gonna go above 13.6 volts. So charged voltage is gonna be 13.6. And that should be about, this is kind of rough, rough estimate stuff. That should be about 80% of the battery capacity. So I'm gonna set the battery capacity to 80 amp hours. We'll see if that gives me a reasonable capacity estimate. And so my goal here is I'm going to try very hard not to discharge it below 20%. You know, I might go down to 10% sometimes, but I'm gonna try not to go down to 20%. So that should make the, the battery last a very long time because LifePo4 batteries and lithium batteries in general don't like to be fully charged and they don't like to be fully discharged. So if I use that middle capacity extensively, uh, I, you know, it should be great. Charge efficiency, we're gonna set that to 95% or 99% rather, because this is a LifePo4 battery. And we're gonna do Pukert's exponent at 1.05. Pukert's exponent, 1.05, okay. Okay, so now we need to set up the Midnight Classic so that it doesn't charge above 13.6 volts. And so what we need to do is we need to set the bulk, absorb, and float values to 13.6 volts. 0.6, oh, that didn't work. Okay, how do I save that? Let's see, okay, charge time, EQ, shit. EQ stopped, what can we set that to? Started, and yeah, we wanna do stopped. All right, one thing that I forgot to do was turn off temperature compensation. So let's see here. We'll go to main menu, charge, T-comp. And instead of 0.5 millivolts, we're gonna set that to zero. And I believe that'll turn off temperature comp compensation. Yeah, now it says disabled. I'm gonna hit enter to save that. There we go. All right, so I got tired of waiting all that time for the 100 watt solar panel on the roof to charge up this LifePo4 1200 watt hour battery. So what I did is I pulled my one solar panel down off the roof. It was just sitting up there. I've got a, I've got a fairly flat roof over this, this uh, part of the porch. And uh, so it was just sitting up there. It wasn't secured to anything. So I just got a ladder and I pulled it down. And then I hooked up my other three panels that I bought a few months ago now. And so what I've, what I've got them wired as is I've got two panels in series, two panels in series, and then those two uh, pairs of panels wired in parallel. So let's, let's look at what that power output looks like on the, uh, the charge controller. Let's see, our battery voltage right now is 13.52 volts, which is good. Charge controller says that we're bringing in 282 watts, 280 watts right now. Our amperage is 20.8 amps and our voltage is 30.9 volts. So again, what I said is that this is in parallel, right? The voltage is being doubled because two panels are in series, and then the amperage is being doubled because there are two pairs of two panels in series in parallel. But I don't notice a whole lot of heat. Cables seem fine. I'm actually having heat problems with my ELF right now between the motor controller and the uh, control board. And these are, these are very cool compared to those. The, uh, the Midnight Classic charge controller is definitely warm. And in a minute, the fan will heat up or the fan will turn on and it sucks air in here and blows it out here. Um, so anyway, we'll, uh, we'll let this run for a little while 
and hopefully this will charge up our LifePo 4 battery a little, little more quickly and I can show you what happens when we reach 13.6 volts. All right, so I was doing some reading about LifePo 4 charging and the Midnight Classic 150 charge controller, which is what I have here. LifePo 4 is usually charged in two stages, constant current or CC and constant voltage, CV, right? And so the way it works is like you put a constant current in until the pack is, and, and my literature seems to conflict a little bit, either 80% charged or 90% charged. Then you switch over to CV, which is constant voltage, and then you charge it up the remaining 10% using CV. So the Midnight Classic is capable of constant current, and they call that bulk MPPT. So it's currently in constant current mode, which is like, I don't know, it's putting like 6.8 amps in or something. Comes out to like 6.4 when you look at the uh, Victron. Uh, so it's charging up with constant current right now. When it goes to absorb mode, absorb is constant voltage. In constant voltage mode, it'll set the voltage and then it'll allow the, the battery to absorb as much current as it's capable of absorbing, right? And then there's float, right? And float is basically the same thing as absorb. Like it sets a constant voltage and it just kind of lets it like absorb as much current as it wants. There must be some difference between float and absorb, but I couldn't figure out what the difference was from the, from the user manual. All right, it is the following day at about 11 a.m. I think the wattage, the amperage in particular, is starting to, to get smaller and we're only putting in about 20 watts right now of charge. I'm looking at the solar panels off to the side and they are sunny and unshaded. So I believe we're nearing our final charge. It's finally throttling down, which is good. Uh, the voltage on the Victron says 13.65 volts, uh, 64 volts. I also checked that with a Fluke 87 meter and via this or 75 amp Anderson connector. And it also says 13.64 volt. Well, look at that. We hit resting. So that's 13.60 uh, volts resting. I think it's only been resting like a second or two. Zero amps going in, zero watts on the PV array. I'm definitely seeing sun on the panels. It was cloudy there for a second, but I'm definitely seeing sun on the panels right now. So I'd be shocked if there wasn't like 100 watts of available power right there. Resting voltage has fallen to 13.59. Again, I expect that to go down quite a bit, but it takes 10, 15 minutes at least. It's clearly monitoring the PV input because it's, I see the voltage input changing ever so slightly. So this, this appears to be a deliberate choice by the charge controller to enter the resting state. Maybe it thinks the battery is charged or something. I'm not sure. All right, still resting. It says 13.5 volts on the charge controller now. Let's hook up our little tiny 300 amp, 300 watt inverter. Not 300 amp, 300 watt. Let's see. And I'm just gonna charge up my laptop. Let's see how much capacity I've got here. Oh yeah, looks like it's 40% drained, so that'll be a fairly decent load. Probably pull 80 watts with that. Let's turn it on, and we'll see if the charge controller comes back on immediately. So, Victron power meter says that we're pulling 30 watts, 42. Oh, there we go. And our float came back on immediately. It's up to 60 watts. It's taking over the entire load of the power inverter. That's nice. We're drawing between two and uh, two in and negative four out, so it's uh, it's doing a pretty good job of keeping that thing maintained while it charges. Cool. I like this setup. This is cool.